This is the smash hit Joel Bateman, Australia's premier deathmatch wrestler, and you are listening to Wrestling With Entertainment. Hey, hello, 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 and welcome to the show. It's Wrestling With Entertainment, bringing you the latest exclusive breaking news, previewing and reviewing the latest shows from WWE, AEW, New Japan, and everything in between every Saturday, and interviewing all your favorite wrestlers every Wednesday. I am, of course, your host, that guy, James J, alongside the leader of Squash Squad, Calico Yachts. Remember, Kings, if she can push a stroller, she can push a lawnmower. Happy Father's Day. And the American Scooter Dust. Lick, lick, lick my balls! <laughs> yeah! Uh, insert witty remark here. And of course, this episode, <laughs> of course, this episode is sponsored by Rogue Energy. Use promo code Rusting with E for 10% off your next purchase. And it is a great day for wrestling. Uh, last week on the show, we interviewed uh, that match wrestler and deathmatch promoter Joel Bateman, which was just an incredible um, chat, I would say. Uh, yes, I loved him as, uh, as as Pepper in Dodgeball. Oh, wait. Wrong Bateman. One day you'll get it right. One day I'll get it right. Damn Alzheimer's. Um... Who am I again? Uh, Joel Bateman, great interview, great person as well. Um, if you don't listen to this interview, you'll regret it, and then I'll have to use my special set of skills, skills that make me particularly dangerous to people that don't listen to wrestling with entertainment. And, uh... I mean, don't get better than that. Uh, next week on the show, uh, this upcoming Wednesday, we got Owen Brody. Uh, and another really incredible, uh, chat. Um, this was definitely, I want to say another one you got, you got to listen to. <laughs> uh, just, uh, just listen. Just listen to everything. You Every, can't go wrong. Exactly. Just put the playlist on. Listen to all the interviews. Yep. You will not be disappointed uh, pointed with Owen Brody. We're, so, we're like a big, we're like a Vegas buffet that you pay more than five bucks for. You can't go wrong with whatever you choose. Oh, absolutely. Uh, the week after that. We got Robin Renegade on, and the week after that, Janai Kai. And uh, now that we're done putting ourselves over, uh, it's time to get into the news. Um, the maybe the main thing uh, this week was AEW is actually in the red financially, uh, because they want to make a video game. Is this a smart move by AEW to put money into something they really don't need to do right now? Scoot up. Um, I mean, they've been, you know, hinting at a video game for quite some time. And they've wanted, they've wanted Ukes in on it, and for those who have been living in under a rock. Ux is the developer of first the WCW uh, NWO games for the N64 and then WWE games for N64 and everything up until uh, basically basically roughly 2000 do you think when, when did you stop? 2006 and uh, digital concepts took over, but 
they've been they've been wanting to do this for for quite some time. I mean, why else would they put their name on a glorified fake slot machine app? Very true. I mean, I know Aubrey Edwards, I believe, is at the head of the project. I didn't know I she, she knew how to make video games. Um, so, you know, I would, I, I think, it, I think it's something worth doing. I mean, while they have, you know, while they have it, it depends on really the final product that's delivered. Will it be different enough than what we're used to to warrant uh, a following? What about you, Kalika? What are your thoughts on uh, on the video, the AEW video? Game? Difference between short money and long money. <laughs> that's, that's basically, honestly, the, the truth, the difference. Because I mean, WWE had years in it, granted, ahead of time, but they also have stockholder money to put put into that. So it AEW's putting its own money into it, and they're trying to swing the fence. Now, I get what they're wanting to do, but the problem is now when this game is finished is if the game gets finished, is price point. Because they have to make up for that lost money somewhere. And I feel like it's going to be the users who's going to be stuck with it. I, I feel more along the lines of probably them looking into the yeah, the the battle pass price method where instead of buying the game outright the game initially is free but if if you want really all the core features you know it's it's yeah 9.99 a month I mean, that, that could work, but... I mean, no one's, ever, no, no one's ever tried it with a wrestling game. The, the big thing with wrestling games is the, the issue of microtransactions. Yeah. And if they were to use a, a, a membership model where you could play the game and earn stuff, essentially, essentially like Fortnite, and where it isn't pay to win, but but you, you could still earn stuff. The only issue with that is is then that game would have to be a continuous running for seasons rather than a, a yearly edition. Count like they can't go the Madden NBA two K level. You see what I'm saying? Like. It, that yeah, well, that's the other thing. I, that's what I was going towards. Is that this would not be a yearly game; it would be a continuously updated, like yeah, updated there'd, game. There'd, yeah, there'd be, there'd be seasons. Um, hmm, that that could work. I, I mean, mean, I mean, you could eat, and it could run events that tie into actual, you know, in-game tournaments where wins and losses matter. Like, just like that the is, show. That, that could work, but the only issue is they're already in the red just trying to develop the damn thing, so they're going to have to go into more money just to upkeep and maintain and keep pushing that. You see what I'm saying? Now, this is, now, this is the big question. I mean, what, what, however they decide to do it, and it bombs... What where does that leave AEW? If the games are in the you know discount five dollar event, it means it failed. 
Because if you're – usually you want minimum the, the, the video game to transfer with what the audience is watching, right? Right. Um, so in WWE for a while, they had that until they did like the 2K and then it kind of got clunky here and there. So, right. and that's where the, the, the downfall came to them. Now, if AEW is trying to do stuff like <sighs> incentivize people by buying the game, by including things like bonuses and memorabilia and stuff like that, then that can work. But now, I, I don't know if they'll have the cachet to do that. What if what if they were producing two games? One that one that's a you know, you're the, the standard IQ fighter and one that's a promotion simulator. That would be interesting. Kind of like sp- uh, splitting it into two different games. I mean, let's face it, the promotion, uh, is, is, the wrestling promotion simulation market is a very, very limited. I don't know if any of you have played Total Extreme Wrestling or uh, Extreme Warfare Revenge uh, or even uh, TNM back in the day. Um, you know, uh, Extreme War for Revenge, Total Extreme Wrestling, which are still being made today by Grey Dog Software now. Uh, full on promotion simulator. Full on death to the very last detail. It's incredible. Uh, TNM was a. a it, was, it was written back in the days of DOS. Oh, but, it was a ma- but it was a match simulator. And it included everything but, you know, the financials and everything. And, you know, that, that, and that's where the community came in who developed, you know, spreadsheets and all that stuff. You know, I, I wasn't going to say anything myself uh, until later on down the line, but I am actually working on a, uh, a, uh, a tabletop wrestling game akin to uh, be loosely based on Dungeons and Dragons interesting uh, it, it's, it's it's very early stages I tried doing something like that when I was a kid uh, but I always felt it was too basic I wanted it to be more complex and well, I mean, now that I am. Becca on it then. <laughs> Damn. Becca. Basic Becca. <laughs> Basic Becca. Becca. That, that joke of the night. I mean, I mean, I could, I could all show you, you, know, you want a dad joke, I could show you the shirt that my son got me. It's a picture of Yoda that says, Yoda best, dad. Oh, <laughs> Okay, no, that's a good one. That's a good what one. The, I was about to say, what the fuck are you laughing at? Uh, <laughs> no, the one thing I wanted just to bring up before we go to the next topic, um, what if AEW did like a licensing deal, like uh, um, New Japan did with Fire Pro? That would have been maybe less costly, but still what? get the the message out, you know, that there's a video game that has all characters in it. I mean, considering that most of considering that Kenny and the Young Bucks are already in Fire Pro, uh, I mean, I I only I have expected them to go to. Um, and now I can't remember it, even though the game is still on my friggin' thing. Uh, on my PlayStation. And I, and I was running... I was running my own G1 at the time. I can't remember. Uh, I can't remember the name of the developer. Dang it! 
Um, but they explicitly want something that evokes the style of No Mercy. Which is an o which is a goat for me. I mean that was like one of my favorite wrestling games. Um and there was a there was a you know, no mercy combined with the Wrestle Kingdom games. Well, I mean We'll see what the finished product is. I'm sure all three of us is going to be curious to play that game ourselves. Absolutely. Um, I mean, they could be holding out until WWE 2K22 comes out. God knows. Maybe we'll even do a maybe we'll even do a review uh, a review of the game when it comes out. Spitballing ideas here. Um. A big congratulations to Cody Rhodes and uh, Brandy Rhodes as um, they welcomed their brand new baby girl uh, yesterday into the world. Uh, Liberty Iris, uh, I- Iris, Iris Reynolds. What? What's it? Reynolds, not Reynolds. Reynolds. Ron- Reynolds. What? Okay, good enough. You know I have an issue with the Oz. Uh, when that's, do not, we that's not the issue. When do we expect Liberty in the wrestling rings, Scooter? I mean, do I really have to say it? Give me Liberty or give me death? Well, there you go. Um, I... I guess I I guess the suit is the Fontanelle sets. What about you, Kalika? She's gonna be Co- uh, Cody's mystery tag partner. <laughs> <laughs> I give it I give it six months. Give it wish you could walk. How about that? All right. Um, yesterday on SmackDown. First ever time a Hell in a Cell match took place on SmackDown uh, between Roman Reigns and Rey Mysterio. Um, people at the USA Network seem to be very um, upset about this fact. Yes. And, and I mean, it did kind of come out of the blue, out of nowhere. Is this WWE grasping for some ratings, or are they actually going somewhere with this in a storyline. This is not story. This is the networks. Um, Fox is pushing them for more and more themed. Uh, and so, and so is USA. Did that matter? Um, we're going to see the King of the Ring return. Yeah. Well, Royal Roulette is coming back, uh, and, oh. and a draft is set for August. Now, that's going to be interesting. Um, Not really. No, it is. And this is why I say it's going to be interesting, because it's a matter of who, how Fox is going to run it. Because Fox is one that to be more sporty, so I could see them doing, like, draft analytics and shit. But USA probably don't care. Uh, but they you know, they wanted more theme shows, hence why they suddenly put Roman versus Ray, you know, Hell in a Cell, and took it off the pay per view. Nothing has essentially been announced uh, to even replace it. Um, but the big issue is that. This is now a match that Peacock subscribers will not get. Correct. But, I mean, WWE already's got their money, so does it really matter? I mean, 
it depends on how that contract is written. I mean, that doesn't necessarily mean they uh, essentially have all that money up front. I mean, I mean, it wasn't they're... like it was a, a one match marquee that had that's going to have fans in attendance. Oh, I got robbed of seeing Roman Reigns versus Rey Mysterio. I it, it, it's more of the fact that it was taken off and put on a competing network. Ah, oh, I see. Yeah, because it's 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 about the ROI now because that was the the issue I had with them going with Fox because it's two totally separate networks, so they're technically serving two masters, and that's where it's gonna get dicey because Fox is gonna be like. We gave you all this money, and we want the return on investment. Right, true. There was even talk of a of a queen of the ring as well. Do you see that uh, happening? I I I definitely see that happening. In fact, I I think I even mentioned it like a while back. I think I do remember hearing that too. Man, they cut like half the women's roster. They <laughs> I need some. I mean, they could give it to uh, Eva Marie. That uh, bringing us to our next piece of news. She made her debut uh, this month, last Monday on Raw, um, with the uh, also de- debuting uh, Piper. Uh, Piper Niven. Piven. Yeah, Piper Niven. Niven, yeah. Yeah, Niven, not Piven. It was online. I thought you said Piven. I thought you said Piper Pippen. No. no, I think you said Niven, but. I mean, online it said Piven, so somebody. Oh, uh, uh, some well, whoever wrote that is a moron. Oh. Um, Piper for raw debut. Um. We actually talked about this last week on the show about Mercedes being a bodyguard for Eagle Marine. Uh, now it's Piper. Uh, smart move by WWE. Sure. See, that's the thing is that I don't necessarily know if this is essentially bodyguard on how she was uh, acting. I mean, I see it more along, and I, I. Sorry to make this analogy, but it's kind of like Eva Marie is Chad Gable, and Piper is Otis. Just uh, somebody you for Johnny Walker, essentially. Some somebody who is apparently easily manipulated, who just wants to please their friend, so they remain their friend. (laughs) Don't see that though. I mean, there was minimal uh, interaction between the two of them, so... I guess we could just see how the story develops. Yeah. What say you, Kaliko? Pipe or debuting on Raw? Honestly, it was a good. It was smart, though. It was smart. Because people already do was already hating on the fact that Eva couldn't wrestle. And then you bring in someone to wrestle in her match, and then she takes the credit for the match. <laughs> People were pissed. People were pissed. So it just builds that suspense. Eventually, she's got to get in the ring, but for the time being, but for the time being, shit, bro, it, it's getting heat. I, I can't even lie. And that's it. Say what people want. It's like she she's a she's a polarizing figure. They generate heat. You either love her because she's gorgeous or you hate her because she can't wrestle. Either way. I mean, you could do both. Or you could be on both. 
Um, somebody that definitely has a love-hate relationship with, uh, wrestling. Sunny. She's out of jail. Yes. Oh. Um, you see this becoming a redemption story of, of Sun, or is, is Sunny going to, um, repeat the old patterns, you know? Well, I, I have her, I actually have her story up in front of me. Um, she was released on June 9th from Monmouth County Correctional in New Jersey uh, after violating a court order. Uh, several, you know, it, multiple warnings with the law, um, you know, charges of domestic abuse that, you know, that you know, this podcaster thankfully avoided. Um, she released a statement uh, on Russell's own. Um, she accepts responsibility for her past mistakes uh, and she's focused on caring for her mother who is in a nursing home. Uh, You know, blah blah blah. It's quite, quite, quite frankly, I think it's a little bullshit. Uh, she's an addict. She needs to go to meetings. End of story. There. Your thoughts. You say addict, I say pretty privileged. Because <laughs> the only way this can all happen is because she got away with it before for being gorgeous in her time. So, But she's maximizing it now, even though she's not as pretty as she was 20, 30 years ago. So that's a big reality check for a lot of really, really pretty ladies as they get older. And she is, just happens to her. All right. I think that will conclude the... Um, uh, well, I, I mean, I guess we could talk about the fact that AEW is planning to make uh, New York uh, one of its primary markets. After it goes, uh, yeah, you know, back out on the road because in September they're they're coming to my neck of the woods, literally, for their first ever stadium show at Arthur Ashe Stadium. Uh, wasn't New York always kind of the the backyard? Being in Chicago all those many times, you have a very very weird understanding of geography, James. Uh, yeah. I told you, uh, I, this is why I don't answer those questions on Trivia Night. The New York is nowhere a, 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 a backyard. Chicago. Uh, if anything... It's uh, coast, Jersey, damn it. If, if, if anything, New Jersey is New York's outhouse. Um, the fact is that they want to take advantage of the fact that the, you know, Vince, even before the pandemic, was really staying away from Madison Square Garden. And, you know, and AEW, I, be I believe they had one. They got one show off. At Madison? MSG. No, uh, New Japan did. It was New Japan then. All right. Um, but. Yeah, it was the New Japan ROH, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but they also want to take advantage of the, the you know, stadiums and arenas that essentially were overlooked. I mean, Arthur S. Stadium. That's where the you know, the U.S. Open happens every year, and 
and if, for those of you who don't know, it's right next to, or, or literally used to be right across the uh, street from Shea Stadium. Now it's uh, sort of diagonally across the street from City Field. Uh, the fact that they're choosing Arthur Ashe Stadium, which at max, I believe, holds about 23,000 uh, 23, seats, notwithstanding uh, the stadium. Uh, you know, performance space, which is a lot smaller than a regular uh, stadium. So it's kind of the perfect place for a wrestling promotion to do a stadium show because they won't have to put out seats on the field or on the court. I, but I kind of feel like they would want to do that. Because you kind of yeah. lose some of the aesthetic of a crowd not having them right up against the gate. Yes, but also at the same time, uh, it's also it's it's a very limited center space in, in Arthur S. Stadium. Not it, it it's it's enough for. A uh, you know a, a professional uh, t tennis court and you know twenty thirty some odd feet around. The in big each direction. Is, could they can AEW fill that arena? Honestly, probably not. And if they don't fill it, doesn't that mean they're taking a loss to some degree? Not necessarily. It depends on what the deal is. Um, you know, considering that Arthur Ashe Stadium hasn't seen any uh, wrestling. Well, won't be seeing or, or even tennis for that matter in a while. And in September, that that's usually when the U.S. Open begins. So they're trying to take advantage of that crowd. Also, the fact that. You know, the city field crowd, the fact that it's 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 a it's a single train fare away, you know, for 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 most of the uh, queens. Hmm. But you know, it seems like AW is just doing a lot of really big bunch of things right out of the gate post-pandemic. And maybe that's not the wisest thing. What's say you, Calico? Does, uh, does AEW have a chance of selling out this, uh, this stadium and your thoughts on them even doing the stadium? My name was to stop using the well, well for it. Anyway, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Scooter. Is New York back open? New York, the city. Uh, yes, as of as of as of this uh, recording, it, New York is for the most part open. Okay, because that would make a big difference. Because with with New York, being in New York City you could kind of get people from the tri-state area. So I'm assuming, let's say they have tickets and you got people coming from Philly, Jersey, the DMV area via yeah. train. I feel like it's 
it's not in a sense to get New Yorkers there, but to get people who want to watch it and is a stone's throw away to get there. Because yeah. that's the advantage of being in in that area because technically the only way you can get there, if I'm not mistaken, is by tra- – you could drive there, but most people are going to take trains and buses. I mean, it's it's literally, you know, the – for for me, it, it depends. You could take – there are two trains, uh, the F train or the 7 train. Uh, and whenever I would go to a Mets game – I would always take the seven train because the seven train always go, went within Queens. Um, yeah, plus, plus there's also a direct connection from Penn Station and Grand Central Station. Um, the two main you know, public transportation hubs in New York City that you can you know, get into there and then get on another train that will take you right to Arthur S. Stadium. Yeah, so that's why they're doing it. Because Florida, at the well, even though Florida was open, you really couldn't get a lot of people to go to Jacksonville, right? Like, unless they were locals. Because especially if you're trying to get people in and out of state, certain state regulations and so on and so forth. But if I remember right during the pandemic, the tri-state area did a pat where it was kind of like they could circulate within those areas. But other than that, everyone else had to come in if you're going out of that area, if I'm not mistaken. So it's a move to bring, bring more people from that area in, which if, and and it's going to happen because people are going to want to go somewhere. That's, they open and cats want to leave. So and the the also the one the one final thing I'll say on this is that Queens used to be at the heart of professional wrestling in New York. The Sunnyside Gardens were before Madison Square Garden. The Sunnyside Gardens in Queens was the home of the WWWF. Hmm. So it, it's, the, it's an attempt to evoke that feeling as well. The older fans. I mean, that was a really long time ago. <laughs> yeah, that's a... I, mean, I, I think the demo, I think uh, the demo that AEW's going those- with are like millennials and zennials. You know how many times when I, when I was with the NYWC and I was talking to fans and there would be the older guys there, very rarely a time that Sunnyside Gardens wouldn't be mentioned. Hmm. Uh, a little quick uh, last piece of news. Uh, uh, last week. Moose wrestled Kenny Omega for the Impact World Championship in a losing effort. Uh, a very smashy finish with um, interference on Kenny Omega's uh, part. Um, honestly, it was only really a one match card and it was super disappointing. Uh, is this basically, I mean, we've been talking about this. Uh, at constant at this point, Impact Wrestling just letting AEW do whatever it wants with their uh, title. Well, Don Callis got fired, so something happened. Uh, somebody, wait, somebody I, 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 I heard I heard it was Callis firing Sammy Callahan. He fired Sammy Cal- From what I read, he fired Callahan, then Impact fired him, and then reinstated Callahan. All right. <laughs> yeah, it's some crazy shit. It's yeah, that's a little bit uh Yeah. But Callahan is wrestling Omega at Slam of Grocery. Definitely going to be a big match there. Um was most just a transition to get to Callahan. 
Yeah, but I kind of feel pissed about that because don't get me wrong, Callahan's cool, but I felt like Moose was probably the most credible guy to beat Omega if it were to happen. So th- that's my only craw that I've got, really. And then he just signed a two-year extension, so something's bound to happen. And of course, with Swarm lost to uh, W. Morrison, so the rise and fall of Swan. I knew the moment Omega came, I was like, "I, I guess third, you, third I, wheel, homie." Third I, guess, wheel. I guess you could say that was his Swan song. I was just gonna make that joke. <laughs> <laughs> Father's Day, the, the jokes keep a coming. All right, that'll conclude our news for this week. Um, uh, real quick, Hell in a Cell updated. Uh, Bailey and Bianca now in the cell. All right, uh, and we'll talk about that on a, a preview in a little bit. Okay. Uh, but first, a quick word from our sponsors. Hey, folks, this is the Colossal Mike Law, and you are listening to Wrestling With Entertainment. Enjoy the show. Support these guys. We appreciate it very much. We'll see you at ringside.